Today, we're going to be learning about translations of parent functions. Our objective is that the students will recognize graphs of parent functions given an equation and given a graph. The students will translate parent functions using H and K. So first, let's look at our parent functions. The function with these lines around the X is the absolute value function. Something that might help you is the absolute, the absolute value function makes a V shape. I got these pictures from Desmos, and in Desmos you can keep scrolling and see that the ends go on forever, but when we're looking at it, there's technically arrows there. Because there's an arrow on the left going left forever and an arrow going right forever, our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our range starts at the bottom of the V, which has a Y value of 0, and then goes up forever to positive infinity. Our second function is x squared. This is called a quadratic function. It makes a u-shape called a parabola. It also technically has arrows on the end. The domain here is also negative infinity to infinity because one arrow is going left forever, one arrow is going right forever. Our range starts at the bottom of the U at zero and goes up forever. Our next function is the square root function. This function is special because it doesn't have two arrows. It has an endpoint on zero, zero and then an arrow going to the right. The reason it has an endpoint is because we can't take the square root of a negative and have it be a real number, and we only see real numbers on this graph. So this one has what we call a restricted domain because it has to be zero or greater in order to fit into the square root function. Our range starts at our endpoint of zero and goes up forever. Our next function has x cubed, which is why it's called a cubic function. This one has arrows on both ends. One arrow goes left forever, one arrow goes right forever. So its domain is negative infinity to infinity. For our range, one arrow is going down forever, and one arrow is going up forever, so our range is also negative infinity to infinity. And finally, our fifth parent function is the cube root function. It's got the root with the little three. It also has arrows on the end. It has a domain of negative infinity to infinity, because there's a left, an arrow going left and an arrow going right. Our range is also negative infinity infinity because this arrow is slowly going down and this arrow is slowly going up. 
One thing I forgot to mention about the square root function that's special about it is its end behavior. Because it only has one end, we're only going to have one line in our end behavior. So as x goes to positive infinity, because the arrow is pointing to the right, f of x goes to positive infinity because it's going up. Then we don't have the as x goes to negative infinity like we normally do because there's no arrow pointing to the left. Now that we've seen the basic shape of our parent functions, let's learn how to transform them. So this is the standard form of our equations. These stars represent the symbols of the parent functions. So like if it was a cube root function, instead of these stars, we'd see the cube root symbol. If it was a quadratic, instead of these stars, we'd see parentheses with an exponent of 2 outside. H moves the graph left or right. And K moves the graph up or down. So our first um, function we know is a cube root. Our h value is going to be inside the cube root. And notice here that it's minus h. So h is always going to be the opposite of what it looks like. So it's going to be, our h value is going to be negative 1. Our k value, so that's underneath, our k value is outside. It's what comes after the symbols, which in this case would be negative 2. It stays the same. So when we go to graph this, we're going to start at the coordinate h, k. So in this case, we're going to start at negative 1, negative 2. So I'm going to put that point there. Then we're going to use Desmos to help us graph the rest of this curve. If you need to know how to graph this without using Desmos, check out the video linked below. So I'm going to go to Desmos and I'm going to put in my equation. Make sure you click outside the cube root before you put the minus 2 on the end. So if you pull the dot along the graph, you'll see. There we go. Our center point is negative 1, negative 2, just like we found from h and k. We can also see that the point 0, 1 is on our graph. 7, 0 is on our graph. And if you look closely, it also goes through negative 2, negative 3. So I'm going to graph those. So, 7, 0, 0, negative 1, and 2, negative 3. 
I know it makes a sideways S shape for my parent function and from looking at my graph. So then I can connect those dots together. Since I have an arrow pointing left and an arrow pointing right, my domain is negative infinity to infinity. Since I have an arrow going down and an arrow going up, my range is also negative infinity to infinity. Then end behavior. As x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes. So this is talking about my arrow on the right where the x's are positive. That arrow is pointing up, so f of x is going to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to... This is my arrow on the left, because that's where the x's are getting more and more negative. That arrow is slowly going down, so f of x is going to negative infinity. My next example, because it's got these lines here, is an absolute value function. Again, h is the opposite of what's inside. Since it's minus 2 there, it's going to be positive 2 as our h value. And our k value is whatever's outside, positive 3. If you ever don't see an h or a k value, like it was something like h would equal 0, if it's something like this, where there's nothing outside, k would equal 0. So I'm going to start at my h, k point, 2, 3. That's kind of like the center point, um, with the exception of the square root, it would just be the end point. So I'm going to go to the point 2, 3, and that should be my center point at the bottom of the V when I graph it. So again, I'm going to go to Desmos. I'm going to clear out our first equation. Type this one in. Y equals the absolute value button is down here. That's minus two plus three. So there I can see the bottom of my V is where I thought it would be at two, three. I can see up here it goes through zero, five. And if you look carefully, it looks like it's going up and over one to get to each. Um, point on the line on both sides. And just connect the dots and make a nice V shape. So, since I have an arrow on the left, and an arrow on, our, on the right, my domain's negative infinity to infinity. For my range, I'm looking at where the bottom of the V is. That Y value is 3, so my range is going from 3. And then the arrows go up forever, so it's going towards positive infinity. Beginning of my end behavior stays the same every time. And since both arrows are going up, I know both f of x's are going towards positive infinity this time. In this example, it gives us the graph, and we're going to write the equation. Um, so like I said earlier, our hk point is kind of at the center 
of our curve, or it's the bottom of the V or the bottom of the U for the quadratic and absolute value function, or it's the end point for square root. So this is the point to negative one. So I know my H value is two and my K value is negative one. Based on the shape, I know this is a cube root function. So I'm gonna put in my cube root symbol. Underneath the cube root, I always start with X. Then it's gonna be the opposite of H, so minus two and then k goes on the end, so minus 1. That's all for today. See you in class.